Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Foraminifera. These guys are giant, single-celled organisms that are kind of like oversized amoebas, and they can be found in the sediment on seabeds throughout the world. In 1995, however, when Japanese researchers were able to collect samples of sediment located in the Mariana Trench, they found 432 living Foraminifera. I know I made these guys sound really large before, but I just mean large in terms of the single-celled organism world. They are still super tiny, and they are usually found with a hard outer shell, but not these ones that were found in the trench. These guys have found a way to adapt by basically building their own shells from proteins, organic polymers, and even sand. The ones most commonly found in the Mariana Trench are called xenophyophores, and these guys use the fact that grains of sand are mostly made of silicone dioxide, which is the main constituent of glass. To their advantage. They basically glue sand from ocean sediments, cast off shells, and microbial skeletons to make their own kind of pressure proof shells. So I guess these guys really are like the engineers of the deep sea. In our number nine spot today, we have the benthocodone. We have all seen a jellyfish before, but these deep sea dwellers are unlike any of the ones that we usually find. Firstly, they prefer depths of around 2,500 feet or 762 meters, usually right on the sea floor. These guys are are actually quite small and compact, with their bell usually measuring just two to three centimeters in diameter. Despite their small size, however, they still have around 1,500 little wispy tentacles that help to propel them through the icy cold depths. These jellies like to chow down on small crustaceans and tiny unicellular organisms, but sometimes their meals are bioluminescent, which is what has led them to develop one of the other unique features on these jellies. This unique feature would be the red color that can be found in part of their bell. Most jellyfish we know of are transparent, and if this was the case for these ones, their bioluminescent meals would be a dead giveaway for the larger hungry predators lurking around the deep sea. This is why the bit of a red that they have in the bell is so important to their survival as it acts as a cover for this blue glow so that they continue on their merry way throughout the dark depths of the ocean. In our number 8 spot today we have aluminum plated amphipods. These guys are found throughout the Mariana Trench, including in the Challenge deep, which is the deepest part of the trench. Amphipods usually have shells made out of calcium carbonate, but the extreme environment in these guys' habitats makes their shells basically just dissolve. They of course can't just be walking around naked and shellless, so what do they do? They adapt in order to preserve their shells. After collecting some of these guys from the deepest parts of the ocean, scientists were able to realize that their exoskeleton contained aluminum on the surface, which then led to the question, how did these guys find the metal since it is pretty sparse in seawater. Well, as it turns out, these guys use sugar-based chemicals in their bellies to extract aluminum ions from the mud on the sea floor that it ends up ingesting while devouring the plant debris that floats down from the surface. In alkaline seawater, these aluminum ions form what is called aluminum hydroxide gel, which is a compound that we as humans use for things like protecting our upset stomachs from stomach acid. This gel then coats their shell and acts as a type of chemical protection so as to keep the calcium carbonate exoskeleton from dissolving. I don't know, I just think that's one of the coolest things that I've ever heard a shrimp do. This is the first known amphipod to do something like this, and these guys are now an important part of researching how maybe one day we can find an environmentally friendly way to produce aluminum. In our number 7 spot today, we have the deep sea hermit crab. Okay, many of us have seen or at least heard of a hermit crab before, so at first thought they are the weirdest thing out there, but as it turns out, the deep sea variety is quite interesting. Instead of these guys carrying around empty gastropod shells like the hermit crabs we are used to, these guys instead carry around sea anemones, and it is one of the weirdest looking things I've ever seen in my life. It looks like these crabs are missing a pair of legs, but instead the legs have actually been adapted to hold the anemone in place. It's definitely an incredible evolutionary advancement for these crabs, but I just can't help but be creeped out by it. In our number 6 spot today we have barophilic bacteria. This bacteria is characterized by its preference for an environment with pressure greater than atmospheric pressure, which of course makes a place like the Mariana Trench a perfect candidate for a home. These bacteria have been isolated from deep sea environments and found to grow rapidly at low temperatures and high pressures. This low temperature high pressure combo that is found in the deep sea environment is usually the cause for the decrease of the fluidity of lipids as well as the depression of the function of biological membranes, but this doesn't happen in 
this bacteria, which has led to the theory that they must have some sort of mutation to have a sort of mechanism that allows their lipids to adapt to their extreme environments. Aside from their superpower, these bacteria help to support life by being a source of carbon for the deep sea animals that end up ingesting them. In our number 5 spot today, we have vent crabs. Vent crabs are so named because they absolutely love and thrive in the extreme environment that is found at hydrothermal vents. These white crabs are actually endemic to hydrothermal vents and they were first described in 1980. The crabs in this family are usually blind and abundant. In fact, their numbers are so vast that scientists often use the clusters of them to help find the location of hydrothermal vents. The eyes of vent crabs are what I really want to talk about today because they change throughout their life, which helps them adapt to their environment. Young vent crabs usually have eyes that would be comparable to their shallow water companions, but upon metamorphosis, their eyes degenerate and they become naked retinas. Hydrothermal vents produce light in the infrared wavelengths, and this change in the vent crab's eyes was made through evolution because it actually allows them to better see this light, although it causes them to not be able to see most other things. It's like a similar concept to night vision goggles. So basically, vent crabs have night vision. Kind of. It is so interesting to see and learn about how deep sea creatures adapt to their individual environments and circumstances. In our number four spot today, we have baby shark. So apparently, shark fetuses with two heads are becoming more common around the world. Who would have thought? According to experts, the mutation that leads to this trait is known as axial bifurcation, and it's seen not just in sharks, but other animals as well, including humans. The question though is why it is starting to happen more and more often in sharks. Sadly, this mutation has quite a negative impact on the sharks as it is unlikely that the sharks with this mutation will even live to see their own birth, but for those who do survive until birth, it is highly unlikely that they will survive long in the wild. Right now, scientists are working hard to figure out what is causing this mutation specifically in the sharks. The leading theories include overfishing, which is leading to a smaller gene pool and thus a higher susceptibility to genetic mutations, or even potentially things like metabolic disorders, pollution or viral infections. In our number three spot today, we have the brittle star. This is a species that was found in 2011, but it took 10 years for it to be researched and fully classified, which happened just last year in 2021. This is a species of brittle star that was found during an expedition on the Banque Durand Seamount, which is off of the coast of New Caledonia in the Pacific Ocean. This specific brittle star first caught the attention of experts because of two atypical features. One was that it had eight arms, this was unusual because most have five. And the other unusual feature is their eight sets of razor sharp teeth. It is believed that these teeth, which line every jaw, are used to snare and shred their prey. This creature definitely is quite remarkable and is the product of millions of years of evolution, where it has adapted and changed greatly to fit its needs in the changing environment around it. But it is likely the last survivor of an ancient lineage which dates back to the Jurassic period. In our number two spot today, we have giant isopods. Despite their appearance, these guys are neither aliens or pill bugs and are just one of those strange and weirdly large deep sea creatures. These rather large crustaceans can reach lengths of around 15 inches and while that's not the biggest deep sea creature out there, that's pretty insane for the isopod world. These guys get their size from what is known as deep sea gigantism, which is an evolutionary tendency for deep sea creatures to grow larger than their shallow water counterparts. It isn't exactly clear why this happens, but it does and is seen in a few different species. It is thought that this may be due to the cold temperatures, which may increase cell size and lifespan, which both may lead to increased body size. In our number one spot today, we have the deep sea dragonfish. These guys are a pretty strong contender for strangest looking animal on this list. These predatory fish use their fang-like teeth to grab onto their prey in their dark, cold, deep sea environment. They have no scales and instead have slippery, eel-like skin, which only adds to their creepiness level. Similar to the angler fish, which you might be familiar with thanks to the Disney Pixar classic Finding Nemo, these guys have a little lighted barbell that hangs from its lower jaw in order to attract its prey towards it. These fish really use bio 
bioluminescence to their advantage, but they also have another, less common ability. Firstly, since many of their prey are also bioluminescent, they have adapted to have a special stomach that will ensure that the light cannot be seen from inside of their stomach so as to not give away their position. Secondly, they are able to produce a red glow. This glow is thought to perhaps be used to signal other dragonfish, but it is definitely used by them to illuminate and detect their prey. They are the only known fish that has the ability to both produce and see red light, as most fish can only see more of a blue light. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the New Zealand monster. In 2013, a woman called Elizabeth Ann uploaded a video to YouTube of this creature washed up on Pukahina Beach, New Zealand. Now, most of its 30 foot or 9 meter long body was buried in the sand, leaving only its flippers and a mouth filled with sharp teeth visible. Elizabeth said it had been washed up during a recent storm and appeared to have been attacked by something else in the water. Before tests were even done, people were speculating about an even bigger creature out there, a killer of sea monsters. At number 9 now, we have the Raystown Ray. This one comes from Pennsylvania's Raystown Lake. Now, For many years, locals there reported seeing a large shadowy figure just below their boats, sending them rocking in the turbulence. Then a local fisherman finally snapped these pictures of it. They quickly spread around the world until the managing director of the lake admitted they had known about the creature for quite a while. Personally described it as a private creature that often came to the surface in April, that it was a vegetarian and that humans were most likely safe around it. But knowing all this didn't satisfy adventurers who still visit Raystown every April hoping for a glance. Moving on to number 8 now, we have the Corfu sea creature. In 2015, a Scottish tourist called Harvey Robertson was visiting the Greek island of Corfu and took some pictures inside a sea cave. Now it wasn't until he looked at them later that he noticed this strange creature in the frame. As this image spread online, even the experts were baffled about what it could possibly be. It appeared to have a nose and snout and looked nothing like the usual animals found in that area. Harvey himself said it looked like a creature from Greek mythology. Next up at number 7, we're going to Australia. In February 2017, the internet was very confused to see this image of a strange creature that washed ashore on Fremantle Beach in Western Australia. Its body was ash grey on top with a white underbelly. It was already decomposing when it was discovered, but people noted that there were parts of it missing. How it got there, what it was, and who or what had taken huge chunks out of it are still being hotly debated. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the Montauk Monster. In July 2008, the Montauk Monster washed ashore on the Ditch Plains Beach, Montauk. The media went into a frenzy as people tried to figure out what it was. Its legs appeared too long to be a raccoon, sea turtles don't have fur or teeth, dogs don't have those kind of eyes or feet, and sheep's teeth aren't that sharp. Some people still maintain that it was a raccoon. Now, The issue would have been put to rest if scientists were able to examine the corpse, but as quickly as it appeared, it disappeared not long after and has never been seen again. Alright, next up at number 5 now, we have the Hook Island Sea Monster. On December 12, 1964, photographer Robert Robert Le Sarek was in a rowboat off Hook Island in Queensland, Australia. Suddenly, heading towards him and his family in the water was a huge, 80 foot long creature. Robert quickly grabbed his camera and snapped these pictures you're seeing now. It appeared to be some sort of giant water snake with a tadpole like head. As it came closer, Robert said it appeared to have smooth skin, no fins, pale eyes, and a white mouth with no teeth. He also said it had a wound on its back, and that could have been the reason why it was taking shelter in the bed. As he tried to take more pictures, it seemed to get annoyed, it quickly turned around and swam into deeper waters. Alright, coming in at number 4 now, we have the Windermere Worm. In 2006, kayaker Tom Pickles took this picture of a creature in Lake Windermere, England. Now, at first, he thought it was a dock, but as he got closer, he could see just how huge this thing was under the water. Tom said it was about the size of three cars and it sped past him. He estimated it was moving at about 10 miles per hour. The three humps you can see in the picture were moving in a rippling snake like motion. Other people were very pleased to see this picture because it confirmed to them that their own sightings of the Windermere worm were real. Next up at number 3 now, we have the Lagerfloat worm, otherwise known as the Icelandic worm monster. For almost 700 years, locals near Lake Lagerfloat in Iceland have reported seeing a 
huge serpentine creature there. Along with the pictures of it, it's been described as being longer than a bus and has even been sighted lying outside of the water, sometimes slithering into the trees. Terrifying thought. Even the head of the Icelandic National Forest Service said they saw it. For the locals though, this isn't a good thing, as the 700 year old legend says that bad things follow the worm monster sighting. Moving on to number 2 now, we're going to Russia in June 2015, where a prehistoric like mutant creature washed up on the shore of Sakhalin Island. Now, as you can see, it was a very shocking sight for the people there to find. The bloodied, ripped up carcass was twice the size of a dolphin, with thick hair hanging off it. Marine biologists were very puzzled. Nothing they knew seemed to match this sight of an enormous dolphin like creature with a beak and fur. Some people think it might have come from warmer waters to die. And finally, at number one, we have the Loch Ness Monster. What else could it be, really? It's possibly the most famous sea monster of them all. It had been a local legend at Loch Ness in Scotland for over 1400 years, but ever since it was first photographed in 1933, the stories and pictures have captured the world's imagination. Nessie is said to be a large dinosaur looking creature, almost like a plesiosaur, but with extra humps on its back. Some of the pictures have been outed as hoaxes, others have been explained away as natural objects in the water, but for the Nessie enthusiasts of today, there is no smoke without fire. They believe that even if you take away all of the fakes, there are still many stories and many pictures that need explaining. Basilosaurus makes a splash onto this list at number 10. Originally when the Basilosaurus fossils were discovered in the 1830s, it was believed that this animal was some sort of reptilian sea monster. So that's why they were named the Basilosaurus, which literally means king of lizards. However, it was later revealed that these creatures are not reptilian at all. They are actually gigantic ancient whales. But unlike the whales we have today, the Basilosaurus was sleek like an eel and they measured up to 65 feet long. Despite its long size, the Basilosaurus had very small flippers and a short head compared to the rest of its body. It is believed that they most likely ate whales and fish that are smaller, but other predators would not dare bother to compete for food against this beast. Tanyostrophius jumps into this list at number 9. The Tanyostrophius lived in shallow waters, but it was also believed to live and hunt on the land. They were not very fast swimmers, so they would often walk along the shores and use their long necks to get within range of prey without being detected. Similarly to lizards that we have alive today, the Tanyostrophius had a tail that could detach if a predator managed to latch onto it and it would be able to regenerate. Their teeth was also very unusual. The front teeth were similar to a rake and the back teeth were flattened like molars. They mainly ate fish and other small aquatic animals, but they're able to reach into bushes and trees with their extremely long necks. Let's take a look at a reconstruction of what these beasts look like if they were alive today. Great long neck, great long tail, there's hardly anybody at all. That long neck is perfect for an ambush predator. If these things still existed today, you would never find me swimming in the ocean, now that's for sure. Up next, number 8, we have another terrifying creature that goes by the name of Leoplorodon. This scary looking creature lived about 160 million years ago, and this was during the Middle Jurassic period. Just looking at some of these pictures, you were able to tell that these creatures were very ferocious reptiles. They were approximately 30 feet long and weighed in at about 2.5 five tons, but it wasn't their size that made these reptiles dangerous. They had a five foot long skull that was filled with razor sharp teeth that were designed to easily tear through flesh, muscle, and even bones. According to paleontologists, the Leoplorodon had a directional sense of smell, so they made for excellent hunters and because of the position of their flippers, they were also very fast in the water. I'm just so glad we don't have to worry about running into these ferocious looking beasts. And now at the Number 7 spot, we're talking about the Jacolopterus rene, or otherwise known as the giant sea scorpion. So if any of you are scared of creepy crawlers, you probably aren't going to like this creature. And that's because when scientists discovered its giant fossilized claw, they were able to assume that when it was alive, this giant sea scorpion would measure about 2.5 meters long, which is much taller than the height of an average man. Paleontologists believe that this creature existed on earth when oxygen levels in the atmosphere was much higher than it is today. So due to these elevated oxygen levels, scientists say that this was the reason behind their enlarged bodies 
and perhaps many other huge invertebrates existed during the same time, such as monster millipedes. There was also huge cockroaches and ginormous dragonflies. I would never want to live in a world where a cockroach is the size of my foot. I don't think I'd be able to go about my day knowing that these creatures are there. Next up, number six, we have the whale that ate other whales. We're talking about Leviathan Melville. This evil looking beast was a prehistoric whale that lived approximately 13 million years ago during the Mycenaean period. Based on its fossils, scientists were able to predict that this whale was approximately 50 feet long and it weighed about 50 tons or about 100,000 pounds. Oh, and did I mention that this beast also had teeth that were 14 inches long? So that means that this beast weighed six times more than an elephant and its teeth were even longer than a saber toothed tiger. But what makes this animal so interesting is unlike other whales, the Leviathan didn't feast on plankton, it ate meat. Actually, paleontologists believe that they ate seals, dolphins, and maybe even other whales. Is this real life right now? Not only was this whale massive, he was the whale version of Hannibal Lecter. Dacosaurus swims on to our list at number 5. Prepare yourselves for this one because the Dacosaurus isn't a pretty sight. Actually they were pretty terrifying looking creatures. Their name literally means tearing lizard and even though they were similar to a saltwater crocodile they aren't any less ferocious. Scientists believe that these creatures were approximately 15 feet long and weighed in about 2,000 pounds. Not only did they look like a strange mix between a crocodile and a dinosaur, they had a powerful jaw and serrated sharp teeth that that they used to tear flesh off a large marine reptile. The scientist who discovered its skull gave this creature the nickname Godzilla because of its unusual snout, which was short and deep and extremely long serrated teeth. It is believed that they had a very powerful bite force and they were likely a top predator during its time. The giant stingray makes us cringe in at number 4. This haunting creature can grow up to 17 feet across and it has a 10 foot poison spike in its tail. They're also known to pull boats up and down river and even underwater. Oh and I didn't mention that these giant prehistoric stingrays are still alive today. Yeah, that's right. If you're not thrilled about meeting one of these gigantic stingrays, then I would avoid traveling to Meganga River and Australia. Scientists estimate that these creatures can grow up to 5 meters in length and weigh 600 kilograms. And even though stingrays don't normally attack humans, they pose a real danger to those who decide to handle them. I guess we all know that's true when we think about Steve Irwin. And that's because they have a deadly barb that can easily penetrate human skin and even bone. And once you are penetrated with their poisonous barb, they will most likely inject their poison. Haunting us in at number three, we have a prehistoric ghost shark and we call it the helicorpion. This deadly looking shark is believed to have been about 30 to 40 feet long, which makes this beast roughly double the size of the largest great white shark currently on record. The helicorpion is mostly known for being the world's only animal with a complete 360 degree spiral of teeth. Actually, the purpose and placement of their teeth have been up for debate for more than a century, and it still remains a mystery today. But one thing that is for sure, you definitely wouldn't want to see this bizarre shark swimming straight for you. But thankfully for us, they weren't meant to eat creatures with bones and they went extinct 230 million years ago. Whew. Well here's a video that shows you the sinister looking animals that they have hunted. Crunching down in this list, at number two, we have the Chronosaurus. These beastly looking creatures lived approximately 125 years ago during the early Cretaceous period. And as you can probably tell by these pictures, I wouldn't exactly call these creatures cute. Actually, they look pretty terrifying. They were about 33 feet long and weighed about 10 tons. It had a short snout and tons of teeth with a powerful jaw. Their teeth aren't the sharpest when compared to other marine animals, but that didn't stop them from brutally killing their prey. That's because they would bite onto their prey, they would shake them to death, and then crush their skull with their powerful jaws. Their fossils have only been found in Australia and Colombia, but that's because of the extreme distance between these two countries. Scientists have speculated that the Chronosaurus could have been found worldwide. And finally, chomping into our number one spot, we have the infamous old Megalodon. The Megalodon has the honor of being the largest known predator in the history of Earth. This beast can grow up to length 
lengths of 60 to 70 feet and weigh 50 to 80 tons. To put that into perspective for you guys, the largest great white shark measured in at about 21 feet and weighed 3.5 tons. So a little guy in comparison. So if one of your biggest fears is the great white shark, I guess you're happy to know that these sinister beasts are extinct and you won't find them creeping underneath your boat anytime soon. But then again, there are skeptics out there that believe that the Megalodon shark is living at the deepest part of our oceans. And considering that our oceans are only 5% explored, maybe this theory isn't, you know, that far-fetched.